Hello everybody, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we are returning to War in the Pacific Admirals Edition, my Let's Play series against Evoken. It is May 23rd, 1942, and we are getting into the phase where it feels like the Allies might be able to start making some inroads against the Japanese, but the Japanese also still have not yet lost a major carrier um, and have only lost one battleship, so they certainly still have the ability to punch back uh, and make things difficult for us. In today's episode, we're going to see uh, what, uh, I guess, what unfolds, right? Like, we're assuming the Japanese are going to make a push toward Burma sooner rather than later. We've started refitting some of our carriers with some of the upgrades that they have, so I don't think I'd be in position to challenge the Kitobutai in the in the a sea of and the Andaman Sea or the Indian Ocean or anything like that anytime soon. Uh, but uh, we do have land-based air, which I think can deal some some punishment to the Japanese. We've already inflicted quite a bit of punishment on their uh, pilot pools, I'm assuming, based on the casualties we've seen thus far in the war. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see how this develops. Additionally, they are bombing the Coast Coast Islands, where we have two battalions of Australian troops there, not terribly well dug in, and so we had been hoping to kind of prevent them from pushing that far west, because uh, if the Coast Coast does fall, that, that imperils our supply line uh, between Australia and India. At least it, it makes it more annoying. Um, so we had put a couple of battalions there to make it at least so that it wasn't a free island for him to take, right? Like, I don't know that we have the forces in place. I know we don't to stop a major effort there, but we should at least have enough to, to require him to deploy you know, a regiment or a brigade or something considerable away from uh, away from the main effort elsewhere. Meanwhile, it looks like mostly just sort of continuation bombing here in the Philippines. Didn't really see a ton of naval action this turn, really not any. Uh, so we'll, it'll be interesting to see here. The Philippines is getting ready to fall. They're pretty much out of supply. Uh, and so it's really just a matter of time there. Maybe a couple more weeks, depending on how aggressive he wants to push it. Uh, and it'll be interesting to see if we see any more movement in China, because we have been trying to dig in and sort of reposition some of our forces there. Uh, but I don't know if he's going to make a serious effort there or not. We shall see. Okay. Into the air. Uh, what are we in the air PM phase, I think? Maybe. So a lot of recon going on, some localized bombing going on, but not much else. Some torpedoes uh, being fired by both the Japanese against some of our inshore coastal ships near Rangoon, and then one of our own, the Thresher, firing at a sub-chaser here off the coast of Japan. Uh, no hits for any of those f submarines or fish. Um, so it looks like a pretty innocuous turn. Uh, Japanese bombardment here at Clark Field. Didn't really accomplish anything. And they've already taken the Dutch East Indies, more or less. So... There's not really a lot of other active combat zones right now, so we may be entering a bit of a lull until... until he's ready to make his next major push. It's just a question of when that might be. We do have some plans for counter-offensives in the near future, uh, but... In the near future, meaning summer, late summer time frame, I've got to get units in place. I've got to get brigades merged into divisions, I think, to do what I want to do. And then I've also just got to prep the units, and I don't want to give it too much away on stream yet. We'll save some of that for a later episode once things are a little bit more firmed up. But I do have counteroffensive plans, both small localized counterattacks and larger scale efforts as well, um, perhaps with the goal of drawing out the Japanese fleet. Okay, these guys are moving northwest, so he's got some destroyers moving toward the Andaman Sea. I think they could be moving to base out of Sabang, but they could also be moving to land troops at Greater Nicobar. We have a small force there ashore, really just aviation support. So if he was to drop in like SNLF Marines off some destroyers there, uh, we'd probably lose the Catalinas there. If I was him, that's what I would do. I would make sure that we don't have float planes based out and, you know, reconning, reconning the Strait of Malacca and telling us when tankers are moving in and out of Meden. So very possible that this uh, destroyer task force could be ships moving to Greater Nicobar. Also, it just could be a missed sighting, and this could be submarines moving north as well. Uh, we do have some ships unloading their cargo here at Rangoon. 
We've got about 6,600 more supply about to come off. We've already unloaded about 14,000, closer to 13,000 here. We also have another 8,300 that will be arriving tomorrow. 2,000 that'll be arriving. Actually, yeah, 2,000 that'll be arriving shortly thereafter. It doesn't look like he had much recon going on in the end of and see this turn. This is clear sky in these two task force. This task force was not detected by the Japanese at all. This one was detected partially um, in the final leg to Rangoon. No detection on my cruisers out here. Uh, these guys are coming back, right, with a little bit of fuel. And then we've got 37,000 supplies here on their way in. I don't know. They're going a little bit too close to Port Blair for my take, but they are coming in under thunderstorms, so that's nice. A nice big fat convoy with 37,000 supply in it. I'm kind of tempted. We've got this cruiser and destroyer task force down here. I'm kind of tempted to use them to move toward Nicobar now that I mentioned, like, thinking maybe the Japanese would be landing some, some units there. Um, there's no reconnaissance on these guys yet. I don't think he's got any air out of Port Blair he could have air out of Tavoy, but most of the aviation we've seen is at Bangkok. No indication of further air units along the Malay Peninsula. They're probably there somewhere, but my hunch is that the Bettys or Nels are further south in Sumatra. We could go how many hexes? Four. I mean, this might be a little foolish. I, losing a, a an armored, losing a... a Heavy cruiser would be silly, but we haven't really risked much yet. And if we do think he could be moving some kind of landing force in there, it could be an interesting decision. They have no recon on us yet. What's the weather look like? Rain in this region. So they could be coming in with bad weather for sighting. We do know he's got some recon back toward Rangoon because he's got detection here, but there's no detection over here. No detection this far west. So I'm inclined to do that. I do want to give Blair a little bit more of a wide berth. So let's do this. Let's use waypoint one is over here. So we'll take a bit of a wider move in. Waypoint two being Nicobar. And I don't think we're not going to get there this turn. So it's more about moving into position in the event that he does land a force there and that he does linger a little bit that maybe we can jump on them in a vulnerable position. Now, if it's a night landing of a, of a quick reaction force that gets down before I have any, like, and then they quickly get out, then we're not going to end up doing anything. But we move at four hexes per phase right now. So that's one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So we'd be right about here. He'll probably, if he wants to sprint into Nicobar, get there this turn. Maybe next, depending on what's all in this task force. If we did take the more direct route, it would be... We'd be considerably closer, but I'm going to be a little bit cautious and... We'll set out around here. About 11 hexes north. So we'll just see. Puts us in position to block it without hopefully being too risky. I mean, at daylight we'll be 13 hexes off Tavoy, which is still in range of any kind of naval bombers if he's got them there. But I could also try and move in some carriers, but... Right, we've also got a light cruiser task force here, so let's do this. Let's go ahead and set these guys off the western coast here. Just to get down there. And see what might be around here. I don't think he's got much aviation, so I am inclined to take a little bit of a a little bit of a riskier approach, I guess. We've got some damaged merchant ships we're going to disband in the harbor here. Go to 
up some supply here at uh, Colombo and send it back into Rangoon. Also, by positioning those cruisers there, we do block any kind of enemy raid that, I mean, it's another possibility is this is like a small cruiser force that could be moving north to raid our supply line between Colombo and Rangoon. That's a very real possibility. And by positioning those cruisers there, we could, we could perhaps position our, put ourselves in position to block such a, such a raid. We're already, we've already got the inside track on these, these ships here. So we should be in position to block any drive on, on these guys, which again, he doesn't know this convoy is here yet. I'm inclined to take the more direct route there. Why, why are they moving further south? Let's keep these guys further north. There we go. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So these guys would be here. So we'd be inside of this convoy, this larger convoy. So it does make sense, I think, also to position some surface assets there to shield that larger, more valuable convoy. That's an ASW task force. I've got a sub patrol here too, but these guys need need to rest and repair. Okay. Shipyard is using 29,000 to 40,000 potential tonnage. Go ahead and set this merchantman to stood down shipyard. They'll be repaired in four days. The sub will also stand down and they'll go to pier side. They'll be done in three days. It looks like there's no major damage, so they don't need to go into the dry dock. Droider also five days. And Montgomery, I think has to, well, she'll be better in one. Okay. So nice. What's all in dry dock right now? Some cruisers. I think these guys are undergoing refits. Be done in about a week. We've got about 57 fighter aircraft at Colombo. If the enemy does make a raid that way, we've got a lot more in at Rangoon. You can see here we've got 159 aircraft at Rangoon. Pretty much all fighters. There's a few few Catalinas in there and photo recon planes. All right, these guys got six aircraft currently out of service. For the next 10 days, we'll get one back tomorrow. Also, we did issue P-38 Lightnings to the 49th fighter group here at uh, Chittagong, I believe it is. And they're currently outfitting their, their squadron. It'll all be done in the next two days. So we'll have another fighter squadron of P-38s there. We've got an additional merchant convoy coming down from Calcutta of about 10,000 supply. Again, I'm trying to push as much supply into Burma as possible before any Japanese attack there. 4,500 in that convoy. These guys are going to arrive at Rangoon tomorrow. So let's set up another convoy. I'm just setting up as many sort of shuttle convoys as I can to get as much into Rangoon as we can before things before things change, before the strategic situation changes. So this will be four merchant ships with 37,000 tons. They can carry 23,000 supplies. We'll get them loaded up and headed down to Rangoon also. We haven't seen any subs along this course. We could use some ASW ships, but... I don't know that I have any more immediately. Most of the subs we've seen are out toward Sri Lanka and out toward the west, not the north-south route. Probably wants to keep them off the coast for fear of uh, running into too much aircraft-based ASW. Bombay, we've still got the air groups up here. Okay, also we are, is this a loading task force? Yeah, we've got... 71,000 fuel loading on this convoy here in the Middle East, which will be on the way to India to provide fuel that can be turned into supply when it arrives in India. The Japanese have arrived southwest of Quilin. Looks like they've got one unit in place here. 
against a portion, uh, a core of ours that is only a portion of a core. So they probably will drive us back here. We're trying to get our troops back into, into Quilin. Now, if the enemy does bypass Quilin and go straight for Lucho, we are vulnerable there. We don't have as many troops here. We've only seen one enemy unit down here. But if they do try and drive north from there, they'll leave their flank vulnerable to an attack out of Quilin. So I don't think they will do that. Without, I think they will neutralize both these cities rather than try and rush past one. That would be my thought. These guys will arrive at Quilin. How close are they? Two days, I would guess. So if they attack next turn and drive them back, then before they can really start moving anywhere to press the advantage, we'll be in Quilin right along their flank. The interesting thing, I don't see any other additional reserves adjacent. It's possible I just don't have eyes on them, but be interesting to see. Cyan has level four forts building five. Chickakong has level five building six, already 40% of the way to level six forts. If we can get Chickakong to level six forts, then we can definitely pull some of these troops some more of these troops out and relocate them somewhere else because we've got 2,200 assault value south of the city plus 1,800 in the city. That would be a pretty tremendous advantage there. A little bit less so the troops north because they could bypass the city. We are working in level 7 forts at Chongqing. I don't know if that's smart. We're probably using a lot of supply to do that. But the Burma Road's still open, which is a big... A big plus, I think. Eight units, 101 guns. Pushno, Chiang Mai has eight aircraft. Bangkok has 70 fighters. It doesn't seem like we have intel anyway that they built up much of a fighter force up there. How do the Philippines look? These guys are, are not doing so hot. We still got 1,600 assault value, but you can see the supplies here are dire. Some Many of the units, no supply at all. The units that do have supply are at like 10% supply, so these guys are beginning to starve out. Where are these guys going? Pearl? Did we drop supply in there yet? Thought we sent some subtransports, but... Yeah, they haven't arrived yet. Not enough to make a difference anyway. It's just a drop in the bucket. Tankers and cargo ships of Boila. No other intel on Japanese positions here. Nothing as far as we can tell anyway. Cargo ships here that we attacked. We take a look at the intel report. We can see it was a very quiet turn in terms of air losses. Just one aircraft, Catalina, as an ops loss. No other losses that turn. No ships sunk. Not sure what the last confirmed ship sunk was. I guess we lost a cargo ship on the 21st. We claimed an armored cruiser and destroyer to mines near Batavia on the uh, 18th, but I don't buy that we sunk a cruiser. That would be way too good to be true. That's probably fog of war. We've got a large convoy with supply and some fuel on the way into... Perth, we're currently diverting south to avoid subs we've seen. Loading some fuel up. Where are these guys going? Perth. In South Africa. 
Lexington and Saratoga both three weeks away from being out of refit for their upgrades, which they're going through. Hermes on its way to Bombay. And the Enterprise will arrive in Cape Town in seven days. So with two weeks left on the refits for the other carriers, the Enterprise will arrive. So we can form three carriers in South Africa as of that time. We'll disband those guys. And in terms of ship withdrawal, 20 days. So we got about three weeks left on some British destroyers, which are very useful anti-submarine warfare ships. But we'll have to withdraw those. And then ship availability. We get the Wasp in 17 days. So we'll get another carrier in 17 days, as well as the battleship North Carolina. So in theory, at that point, we will have... In 17 days, the Enterprise or the the Saratoga and the um, Lexington will be out of refit four days after the Wasp arrives. So we will have the three carriers in South Africa in 17 days. We will have a, another carrier in Balboa, so sort of the Panama Canal area, I believe. We will then also have one carrier at Pearl. So we could relatively quickly concentrate. Five, what is that, five? Can I do math? Five carriers. And again, we'll still have um, the Yorktown, I believe, is also on its way to South Africa. So that could be six. So we're getting to the point where we can really fight. We're getting to the point where we're going to have enough weapons to do that. The North Carolina, a true fast battleship. So that'll be nice to have as well. And then we've got the Prince of Wales is trying to get back to England so it can repair. It's currently at uh, 63 days out. So about two months. A little bit of a journey still there for the badly damaged ship. Hopefully she gets back into action before too long. Because it's, it's been a good long while. You know, it looks like some shipping arrived at Pearl. Support, replenishment. Well, let's disband these guys in, in here. Amphibious has arrived. And then did any of those other ships, which I was going to transport troops out of Avu or Pago, Pago Pago arrive? Yeah, these guys did. So they are unloading the 24th separate infantry regiment. Once they successfully unload that group, then we can bring the 34th to Pearl where it can form the 24th Infantry Division at that point. Alternatively, may want to send them to go get some Marines, although we've got a task force here at Savi. 8th Marine Regiment, though, is all alone on Savi, so I don't quite want to try and load it up yet. What's the... Um, she's got a 6,000 ton limit for docking... Any of these guys over 6,000? That's at 4980. Oh, that's a cargo ship. 4980, 4980. Okay, so actually we could form a single ship task force, dock and load up part of the regiment. We've got another regiment on the way, don't we? Yeah, the 58th will be there. Soon, when the fifty eighth arrives at Savi, that's when the uh, that's when the eighth gets replaced. I don't want to quite move them yet, so I'm going to disband that task force, hopefully to avoid any Japanese submarines. Although the port level is only at a one, so they can still attack ships in port until three. But in any event, we'll uh, we'll wait another day or two till that fifty eighth regiment is closer. And then we've got the 147th Independent Infantry Regiment also heading to Vavu. 
Once it unloads them, they'll pick up the second Marines so we can get the second Marine division assembled. So we've got elements of the second Marine on Vavu, which, like I said, are just going to be picked up. We've got the eighth Marines at Savi, which are going to be picked up. We've got the six Marines and the second USMC engineer regiment, both on transports. By the way, are these going somewhere? Did I send them to Pago or where are they? They're going to Melbourne. I don't remember sending them there. But, I mean, we could have the second Marines form in Australia. That's certainly a, a viable option. And then we've got some support units going to Savi because I would like to turn Savi into a more of a forward base. Although I'm not sure how much of a forward base, right? Like it's still at extreme range for anything except for like B-17s. And even that's at long range uh, from Savi. Likewise, not much better for the Ellis Islands, which seem to be lightly held. Savi would be a good defensive position, but not great on a on a springboard. So maybe Suva is the better base to base out of, which is where more of our troops are anyway. We've got liberators and stuff there also. But yeah, that's the situation that we find ourselves in on May 23rd. I guess it's the 24th now. A slightly quieter turn. This isn't going to be an hour-long episode or anything. We're going to have to start withdrawing some of those aircraft in Burma soon. The AVG boys, we still got a month left on, but some of the other units, they're going to start withdrawing soon. And let's see, these uh, troops here at Mole Mine... It's up to a level three fort working on four. Pegu is at three working on four, almost to four, actually 77%. Rangoon's at three, 83% of the way to four. Quilin's at 64% of the way to four. It seems really easy to get to three level forts and things start getting much more difficult when you move beyond that. All right, so the 808th EAB has arrived at Lido, which we're going to turn into a major base here in eastern India. It's already at level 7 airfields. We're working on getting the forts up too. Chittagong also has a number of units here. Field artillery units and... HQ units, which we're going to pull out of strat mode. Okay. All right, Ramir Island, we've got some troops on. Also, a few engineers. Let's build a level one airfield there so we can turn that dot base into a real base. Okay. Yeah, so I think the ultimate drive is Burma soon, but he may launch a strike at Sri Lanka as a diversion, perhaps. That is certainly possible. Got a fair amount of supply there. Some decent fortifications and a couple of good units. But yeah. I think that'll probably do it for this episode. I will start bundling. If things don't get more exciting or more um, active soon, what I'll probably do is start bundling some of these turns into one episode. It's been a long while since my last turn. I've been real bad about getting this one back to evoke and we had some stuff going on here personally which has really prevented me from playing or streaming or doing anything that I really wanted to do much over the last few weeks and so that's um you know that's why things have been a little bit quieter on the new stuff front and especially on Twitch but hopefully that changes soon and and if things don't pick up in this game then we'll start bundling turns so that it's not a lot of me rambling over nothing 
but uh, but obviously if there's major developments or things that come up, then then I'll show those sooner rather than later. But probably two episodes per or two turns per episode, maybe three if it's really, really slow. We'll always show the combat replay. We just might not show as much of the intern orders uh, in the event that uh, that I don't have anything to really talk about. But that'll do it for today's episode. I hope you guys did enjoy. Once again, this is the Historical Gamer saying thank you very much for watching. And until next time, as always, I'm out. Bye-bye.